Hey everybody, Ben Somerville Gardener here. Today I have quite a bit of work to do. I'm going to be digging up a fig tree. I'll tell you about that in here in a minute. I've got some other plants right here that I need to move around and the biggest thing that I'm going to be doing is moving a bunch of taro from a planting I have on this side of the yard and moving it over there to help you know soak up some of the extra water and to kind of fill in in between the trees and stuff. So stick around. So over here on this side of the yard with all the bananas we've got a bunch of taro and both of these plants, actually all of these plants going down all the way down. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, I think. Uh, and all of these are originally from uh, some taro that I bought at a grocery store. So I know that it's good and edible. I don't have to worry about it being the, uh, the, the stinging nettle kind. There's two main types of taro that you can get. The first kind is gonna be edible. Uh, I find it at grocery stores, Asian markets, things like that. And other ones are gonna be at like your Lowe's Home Depot. Those are like your giant varieties. And those kind, do not eat them. Even if you cook them really well, they will set your throat on fire at, or put the, like the pins and needles almost like a, I don't know if you've ever had like a poison ivy or poison oak on your skin, but imagine that going down your throat. Very painful. So definitely don't eat your, your taro that comes from Lowe's. But this kind right here, it came from a Harris Teeter right down the road from me. We've had some, we've eaten it. Uh, just make sure you cook it like a potato, bake it in an oven. There's a bunch of recipes out there. These are edible, which is just like everything I try to have in my backyard here. It's all edible. So today I'm going to dig up a couple of these and kind of show you what uh, this, uh, it's a crom, I think, the, the ball that's underneath there that shoots out the leaves. I'm going to bring you in here close so you can see what these look like. And I'm going to very carefully take a sharp shovel, separate a few of them, uh, go ahead and chop them down, and then plant them over on the other side. This really isn't a good time to be cutting them apart and transplanting them. But, you know, sometimes it's late in the season. You want to do what you want to do and... Eh, it just is what it is. So down here in this one, uh, kind of dig around a little bit, you can see that there are quite a few spots here where uh, this is like an individual plant. It has its own little growth right here. Here's another one. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. And all of these were started from just one single uh, ball. Uh, you know what, I've got one of those from the other ones. Here, let me show you what this looks like. So over here on this side of the yard, these are the only inedible ones. These ones over here came from Lowe's. Uh, they are absolutely gigantic. They are very large uh, when they grow up and they have monstrously huge leaves. This is one that uh, is from that and you can just kind of see how it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just like a little rooty thing. And then it's got a little plant that comes out right here. Uh, here's a couple extra. These are just my extra ones where I chopped them off and you can see even when you cut them in half, uh, they definitely do still come back and grow. If I were to put this in the ground, that would definitely keep growing. And this one too, this is a nice big chunk. Oh, hey, snail. Again, this one right here, that is still alive and viable. And it's just a chunk that I cut off of a bigger one. And all these that are right here are all inedible. Uh, these are the only ones again, so I make sure that I keep these separate from all of the rest of them over here on this side of the yard. And the ones over here on this side of the yard that I just planted this past winter. There's another one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven or eight of them over here. So yeah, definitely a lot of taro going in over here. A lot of taro already going over here. So we're gonna transplant a few of them up here in between the loquat and the fig right here. Just kind of fill in that area with some nice green foliage. Now, it's one thing to say I've got a sharp shovel or hey, you need to use a sharp shovel for something. And then there's this shovel right here that actually has a nice chisel tip and saw blades going down the side. This is the Root Slayer shovel. I've talked about this before in other videos. Really like these shovels because they're able to get right down into the plant here. Just go ahead and chop the, one of these things out. So let's, uh, let's just take these two out right here and just kind of angle it a bit. Make sure you don't break off too many leaves and just stomp this sucker down in there. Give it a little bit of a lift, a little bit of a pull. There we go. And let's go ahead and rip this thing out and see what it looks like. Lots of roots. Ooh, snippy snap, snap, snap. Lots of roots. All right, so let's go ahead and shake these things, get them separated. There we go. Kind of separated a little bit. So that's really all you need, just a little bit of that uh, uh, corm, crom, uh, however you say that or spell that. 
And this one here even has a whole other start coming off of it right there. So that'll be putting out a, another new one. And that's really all it takes is just that, that little bit. It's really not that much at all. So let's go ahead and set these off to the side, dig out a few more of them, and I'll show you how I transplant them on the other side. And again, we're just gonna come in here with a shovel right about in, right about there. There we go. And this way we can go ahead and chop off those three, get those separated. And then I'm gonna go out ahead and pull a bunch more of them. Oh, it's so difficult with all these stinking leaves. And stomp. Ugh. Some of these are really, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Not sure if you heard that crunch. Sometimes you just gotta get a little violent. They'll grow back. I'm not hurting too much anything. Ugh. It'll all grow back. See how thick that thing is down there? Super thick. Tons of roots. There we go. Got these three out. Get these things separated. But yeah, again, that's all you need. Big old chunk of roots. A little bit of the, the main parent plant there that shoots out the new growth. And yeah, there's tons of new stuff popping in through here. Got one there, got one up here. Probably another couple more in there. These are super great growers. Really like this, this kind of uh, taro. Edible and very prolific. Now, while normally you'd wanna be planting these things in a uh, well-draining, uh, you know, loamy mix or something that's really fertile, this area right here, let me see if I can show you or get you to hear just how squishy this is. Now, hopefully you uh, could hear just how squishy that is. And it's like that kind of in this whole area. And one thing that I do know is that these grow really well, the taro or the, your elephant ears grow really well in squishy, just absolutely damp, nasty soil. And the stuff that's under here, uh, if you look at some of my previous videos where I went around the yard and kind of tested what kind of soil this is, this is a very heavy clay sand mix. So it's really not good for growing anything that I can think of. But these taro, they just, they do really well in, in damp environments. You can even plant these things like in the edge of a pond, uh, so sitting in soaking water the whole time, and they'll thrive just fine. And if you're not careful, they'll take over the whole area. If you might want that, I don't know. It might be good for fishing. The one thing that I do know is that it's not very good for fig trees. Because I got this fig right here, and I really want to try these figs. They are uh, the Violet de Bordeaux, the VDB, uh, or one of the VDBs. Uh, and this was a nice, somewhat lush looking tree, you know, tons of leaves on it, nice big leaves. And it's slowly, let me bring you in here close. It has slowly reduced itself to the growth ends on here really aren't all that healthy. Uh, they're actually looking like they're, they're drying out or trying to, to die off. All the leaves have pretty much curled and they're just done. It hasn't rained. I haven't watered for days. And this stuff is still just absolutely squishy down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig this up, put it in a different pot with some dry soil, put it under the canopy and help like dry this out. And once this thing gets back to life, because it kind of looks like right there at the top, like, I mean, that growth node, it, I think it'll live. I really hope that it will live. But I'm going to get this thing out of the ground in a pot, back in a pot, unfortunately, and then just put it up here under the canopy, let it come back to life, and then I'll bring it back out over here, mound up this soil right here, just at, just pull all these wood chips out, give it a nice little mound and plant it up on top of the actual ground surface so that it's got good potting soil or not potting soil, but you know, jungle growth, you know, which is composted uh, wood chips and, and other matter and some perlite and other things. But get a nice little mound going and get it up on the mound so it can get the roots up out of the water and dry out every now and again. Because one thing that you don't want to do is get your figs soaking in water because once the fruit's set, you get an, just a light rain, or if it gets too much water, they'll get the stretch marks on them, they'll be split and open, and nobody wants a gross, nasty, split open fig. So I'm gonna carefully rake, rake these out, go ahead and dig this up, and I'll be right back with you. All right, let's see what this thing looks like when I try and pull it up and out of here. Hopefully it doesn't get damaged too much. Wow. 
yeah there, there's not a whole lot of root growth that it's even been able to put out if you can kind of see like just a couple little thin roots but for the most part ooh, that even like smells bad so there's the original root ball and yep it is a violet de bordeaux fig oh yeah that just yeah it smells like like nasty pond water and this soil here is just absolutely soaking wet oh you can just see the drips coming off of that like it's just soaking wet not good for a little figgy just out of curiosity if i dig this out how much you want to bet that i find oh yeah we definitely got a uh, a drainage issue down here yeah that's just that is way too wet down there for a fig to be any kinds of happy so yeah let's just fill that back in toss some wood chips on it i'll mark this spot because i want the tree to still be right here and when i go to plant it up the next time it'll be up here at this level you know wherever the we pull the wood chips back just whatever level that is that way the roots can get up and uh out of the water okay now back to our tarot oh hey we almost missed one glad i looked there nice little baby guy so some of these taro are little tiny ones some of them have a good chunk of the parent other ones are a bit smaller that one should be fine though uh oh might have another no it's just roots so yeah some of them are a little bigger than others to include this one here which this one here is uh yeah i don't know why i grabbed this one specifically because this is pretty much eaten size right here so if you wanted to uh check out a recipe <laughs> there's definitely plenty of taro oh and a slug so yeah this is one is uh eaten size right there go ahead and cook that sucker up and i like some brown sugar and some butter and dress it up kind of like a sweet potato but it's more like a regular potato like a like a russet or like it's a white potato anyway okay so uh we've got one two three big one that's like eight nine yeah so that's plenty so uh what i've done is just kind of drawn a little rectangular area from where the fig was to where the loquat is and i'm just going to kind of fill in this whole area right here with the taro and what i want it to be is just kind of filling everything in because We've got a lot to fill in over here. All right, so go ahead and toss this stuff around. Um, this is just gonna be kind of a, you know, break away the chips, dig a little hole. That's pretty much all there is to it. Lots of raking of chips. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I think I found where some of that rotten smell is coming from. It's all the grass that used to be under here that got covered with the paper and then just kind of soggy and it's breaking down and it's, you know, it's all bacterial uh, breakdown right now. And you get some of that good fungus in there, but it, yeah, it'll happen eventually, I hope. So this is what we're looking at right here. Uh, all that, ooh, oh, there's some good worms right there. These little red wrigglers, little guys. So lots of worms in here good fishing well these aren't good fishing worms but I got some night crawlers over in another pile yeah so all this grass breaking down right here that's what's causing a lot of the the smell is the the bacterial uh the action eating all this stuff and breaking it down because even over here in these wood chips where i'd normally see a lot of fungal growth there's just not a lot of that good mycelial growth over here it's just too wet and mucky and there's not enough air flowing in here for the the fungus to to thrive i guess that's one of the points of putting the taro over here is to help soak up the water because those leaves transpire a lot of water each day especially in the hot south carolina sun so let's go ahead and get digging on this Ooh, honestly the smell kind of reminds me of if you've ever been to like a uh, a horse stable after it's rained and all that hay and straw that's just kind of decomposing and kind of ugh, that ugh oh yeah super crazy just how wet and mucky and nasty this is so where normally i would dig a hole that's you know twice as deep or twice as uh big around as the pot that something comes in and do all that extra work for this and that's what's crazy it's almost almost dry sand underneath here that's what's really crazy about this so i'm just going to dig a hole mound up these clumps around it and you can see even here where the water just it isn't getting down and through here about as deep as the worms are digging right here nice little happy guys right there 
So as deep as they're digging, that's about as deep as the water's able to get. Otherwise, this is all just lightly moistened sand. It just, it crumbles from where they had, uh, you know, tried to level off the property before they built the house here, you know, how many ever years ago. And nothing ever got down through here. But I mean, the, the grass kind of did some roots maybe six or eight inches down, which is good because eventually that'll help with the, the percolation. But yeah, it just, there's just, there's no water down here. So hopefully getting the roots in the ground, it'll help, uh, you know, pull the water from the surface, get it uh, mixed up, get the earthworms down in here to help put some organic matter in here because there is uh, very little organic matter other than just the roots that are in the ground, which will help, but it needs a bit more. So for this hole here, I'm just gonna toss this guy in right here, and bury it, kind of stand it up a bit with these little clods kind of get them filled in around here. Yep, not even going to be too concerned about it because these things are so crazy. They grow so well. So easy to grow. Yeah. Yep, that's good enough. And then just bury back. It'll get along just fine right there and go crazy. So let's go on to the next one. What do we have here? Buddy, you're a little ways away from the pond, ain't you? What are you doing? Huh. You look like you belong in a pond. How big of a turtle are you? How mean are you? You okay with me picking you up? Let's see what you look like. Yep. I'm scaring you, aren't I? You're alright. Use a good turtle. Let's see your yellow stripes. No hook on your bill. Let's go ahead and look you up. I think you're a pond slider probably, but... We'll give you a look up and see if I can put the name of what kind of turtle you are. There you go. Just happen to see a rock running, not really running, but you know, a rock moving across the, the, the back uh, area right here. It just kind of looks weird when you see a rock moving as you're trying to talk and, and think of what you're trying to say on the video. I mean, I might be a little crazy sometimes, but I don't see things anymore. Especially rocks walking. I mean, that's just a weird one. I mean, who sees rocks walking across the fence? Oh man, I just went and checked the temperature. It is 90 degrees already today which is gonna be the hottest May temperature yet. I was able to find a nice little chunk of wood chips with some good mycelial fungus on it. And it's already dried out in this uh, hot sun we got today. Uh, these are not looking any too happy. Uh, they're wilting a quite a good bit, uh, kind of flopping over. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these watered up. And I do love my little water wand here. Yeah, we'll get these things good and wet up. Hopefully they'll pop back to life. There was a small chunk I threw in right about here somewhere. It didn't have any leaves or anything on it. It was just a chunk of one of the, the parent plants. Had some roots on it. It might grow. It might not. Oh well. There we go. Good and wet down. That should look a whole lot better here in just a couple hours once those roots soak up that water just a bit and kind of get rehydrated and get that hydrostatic pressure back up in those leaves and hopefully they'll just start poking straight up in the air. All right, so what's next on the docket for today? Oh, it's getting so hot. I was coming up here to check on our fig because I got it kind of trying to dry out a bit in the sun and shade. Uh, see if we can get some of this to just dry out a bit before I go putting it up in another pot. And I noticed my cannas, which are coming up really nice. Some of them have already started to flower just a little bit, like this guy back over here. And it's got the little seed pods on it. So one thing I was thinking was, I still have some seed pods left over from last year. I'll bet you I can show you how to uh, germinate some of these seeds because these things are notoriously hard to germinate from seed. And the really cool thing about getting a seed to germinate for the cannas is that it'll be sometimes a hybrid between one or two of the different types that you have uh, growing amongst your different plants. So I've got some of these uh, Picassos right here. I've got some of the, uh, the red leafed ones. I forget what these things are called. Up over here, I've got some more of the red leaf. And so these are the, the red presidentes. I know that these are some really big ones that grow uh, right here in, in this area. And those seeds will be a mixture of the Picassos and the Presidentes and the, the red leaf ones. I don't know what those are called. So you'll get a, your own little hybrid mix of whatever kind of mix you have on your own yard. So if you have gotten in the past two or three different kinds and you see that they've got those seed pods on them and at the end of the year they've dried out and they've got the little black BB looking things in them, you can plant them as I've done over here in this area and they will come up. So I'll get you guys a video 
for that coming up. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on any of those uh, interesting videos on the how-tos. And there's also another video coming up where I'm gonna be taking these flooring tiles that I got from the clearance section of Lowe's and some of these extra little pieces here. We're gonna be disassembling all of this, putting these all together and making hopefully a very super interesting, if, if you think that uh, it's super interesting to have lizard condos, uh, but making uh, little lizard houses so that they've got some nice little hidey holes and spaces to go into. And it's nice little decoration for your patio or your yard. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get that video when it first comes out. And another video that's gonna be coming out also is going to be on Awapui ginger. Uh, this stuff's really cool. And I've got this stuff coming up in a lot of places. Uh, there's this area right here by the patio and up there by the patio where that is, that's uh, like a full sun location. You can see that it's pretty much just sitting out in the open sun all day long. And then there's some more that I've got back over here in the shade. And this is pretty much shade all the time. Uh, got some growing back in here, which is kind of interesting for zone 8B, 9A-ish. Uh, these are a 9, 10, uh, 11, 12 on up kind of uh, a tropical plant but got some popping up over here in the shade i thought there was some more over here in the shade yep here's one right here uh just randomly popping up right here there should be another one up over here and another couple more that'll pop up over here and there's a few more let me see if i can find one over here now the one that's over here i only just happened to find because it poked up through many inches of the wood chips right here uh, and I kind of unburied it just a bit so I could find where it was because there was this one here and another one that this one just came through like Kool-Aid man through many inches of of the uh, the wood mulch here, which I was very surprised by. So uh, I'm going to show you how I transplant this stuff or, or get it uh, moved around also. And this is some really cool stuff. I will need to wait just a little bit on that video. That'll probably be coming later on the summer. So for sure, make sure you subscribe that you uh, get that update too, because uh, growing awapui ginger, not all that easy, but uh, honestly, it's very doable. I'm kind of impressed with its ability to go here in, a, in zone eight, nine. I guess one of those important things when it comes to transplanting something from the ground into a pot. They kind of need a pot. So here's a pot that just happens to have some lemongrass in it. I'm gonna go ahead and plant it right in here somewhere. All right, now when it comes to potting this up, I'm honestly, oh, a little fuzzy thing just fell off. I lost my, my wind fuzzy, my dead cat. Test, test, one, two, we good? Yes. All right, when it comes to planting this thing back up, honestly, I'm trying to dry this out and hopefully get any rot or anything that's on these roots off. There's some kind of a powdery mildew or something growing on the side of the trunk down here. So hopefully, since it looks pretty supple, I mean, it looks pretty good, honestly, the, the trunk. Kind of want to dry it out, put it back in a pot, put it in a more controlled environment. Uh, I've got some uh, very loose wood chippy, like half composted wood chippy stuff here. Put some jungle growth on top of that, just so that it's good and uh, draining and hopefully it'll bring it back. As long as it's doing good, then we'll go ahead and make a mound over there where we pulled it from, pile it up, and kind of get it about at ground level so it has good airflow and hopefully doesn't try to die again. So I'm gonna go ahead and top this thing up with the jungle growth, or about top it up. That should be about good. Put a little hole right here in the center for it. That should be plenty big. And then very carefully, I'll show you this kind of up close if I can. Uh, there's that powdery stuff right there. I don't know what that is. I'm pretty sure it's not good though. And I'm just gonna kind of surround this with this dry soil or dry compost or whatever this stuff is and just kind of let it sit. And I'm not going to water it because typically whenever you put something into a bigger pot and pot something up, you water it. In this case, because I'm trying to get it to kind of dry out a bit, I think I'm just gonna let it sit here for a day or so and just kind of play it by eye, if that's a thing. So make sure you uh, look for a follow-up video on how that's doing. Now, where did that turtle go? Cause I just walked around the yard. I didn't see the turtle. Huh. And after just a couple of weeks, these things are growing just fine. Everything popped back. A few of the leaves did, you know, dry and die off which is normal it, it happens but these things are doing pretty good nice and lively this one's getting a little wonky and kind of growing a little funny but yeah we'll keep it anyway doing good though